time is now 6.30. If you can go, please join and stand with me. officers, uh, we have detectives, and we do have a spot for a community relations officer. 
That is not filled right now. I don't know when, if that will be filled because it's about getting the correct number of personnel before we can start to do that. Um, I report directly to the Board of Police Commissioners. I do have a couple of commission three commissioners here um, right now. Um, we meet once a month, usually on the fourth Tuesday of the month at 6 o'clock. Uh, department head, this has not changed from last year, and the only reason why it has not changed from last year is because uh, I will be in contract negotiations with the town, um, so that has to be uh, kept as it is now, because obviously we don't know what that will be uh, down the road. Uh, so that has not changed from this current fiscal year. Deputy Chief, same thing. We are both outside of the union, so we're not, we don't negotiate when it comes to the union uh, benefits and pay, only for the operation standpoint. Um, the Deputy Chief and myself have individual contracts. Uh, the Administrative Office Assistant, um, she's really one of the backbones of the police department. Uh, she does a lot, um, and I'm going to get into the next slide where we start talking about uh, her tasks. Um, the previous uh, administrative assistant, I think we had for six, seven years, um, she had left, um, the bottom line, it was uh, uh, vastly underpaid, and it is a, a two-man job, a two-position job. Um, I submitted the budget to the first selectman originally and added a part-time dispatcher, I'm sorry, part-time administrative assistant because uh, it is vastly needed and I still stand by that today, uh, how it is vastly needed. Um, however, the first selectman wanted me to cut that position, so I had to cut that position out so you won't see that there other than a cross out for that line item. So some of the tasks that we do or that they do and for that position is accounts receivable, payable, Uniform and sick payouts, budget preparation, dealing with our cash box, case records, uh, court paperwork, dispositions, uh, freedom of information request. That is nonstop. That goes continuously. For everything you can imagine, we're getting a request, whether it be from the victim, the suspect, the lawyer, the court. Uh, we have to make this, we have to make copies. Not only that, they have to take and watch body cam footage one-to-one. -one. So what that means is that person has to literally sit and watch. If it's a 50-minute body camera footage, has to watch 50 minutes of that body camera footage and redact things that is not releasable to the public. And there are a lot of things. So whether it be a child that we have to blur out or a, um, a setting where it may be uh, intrusive for that person, uh, like in a hospital setting, those things have to be blurred out or deleted or removed from that video. And what we get in return, it can take her two, three, four days to complete that. The town takes back $10 because that's all we can charge for a disc is $10. There is a new bill that is going through the, the house now uh, where we can be able to charge that time because, in essence, all this takes a lot of time, but we can only charge 50 cents a piece of paper and $10 a disc. And some of these reports are, are this thick, and you have to go word by word to redact that information. Uh, and people don't realize how long it actually takes. They also deal with permits, bingo, vendor permits, raffle, uh, payroll, scheduling, training files. Um, at, at bare bones minimum, I knew based on an exit interview from my previous administrative assistant uh, that that position was vastly underpaid. So what I needed to do was at least increase it so it's somewhat reasonable. If anybody followed my hire process during that administrative assistant position, um, you would have seen that there was multiple comments, and I mean 20, 30 comments about how underpaid uh, that of uh, 55000 is for, for that position in itself. Um, we have that field now. She's great. My job is to hopefully keep her and maintain because it is a lot of training that I have to give that person as well. Uh, next line item is, is police salaries. These are sworn officers. Um, it includes 19 police officers. It does not include the deputy chief or myself. So when we talk about the number of police officers here, we're talking about 19. There is no increase in police officers from the current fiscal year. Um, I know we wanted to try to keep the budget as low as possible. I've been to this board multiple times over several years, um, even with the police commission, and I've repeatedly said that my goal is to get to 21 police officers plus the chief and deputy chief for a total of 23. I understand that there was a tax increase last year because of, uh, of uh, home values, et cetera. 
So we did not put in an extra vet, uh, officer in this year, though we were also having a difficult time finding good solid candidates. I think we're hopefully moving in the right direction where we're going to have these solid candidates, but I did not add any in this current fiscal year. Even still, there's 169 uh, town and cities in Connecticut, and there are umpteen police departments, and police departments, our side was the population of 10 to 20, we rank at the bottom, near bottom, of having the number of officers per thousand residents. So for us to get to a total of 21, plus the chief and, and the deputy chief, it shouldn't be a problem, and still we can safely and effectively police the top of the playfield. The next slide is going to show basically where everybody falls in category for their pay scale. There is an increase of 188,000 in this line item, but if you see how it gets broken down, so the lieutenant, what his salary is going to be, you have two sergeants at a certain salary, another two sergeants at a certain salary, and then you have police officers at different steps. Now, you get hired, you get hired at a certain rate. But there are also steps involved throughout your career. So when you get to like a, your third year of your career, you jump a step, so you go into a different category. Then there's like a fifth year step, you jump into the fifth year step. Then there's an eight year category, which you would max out as your top step in, in patrol. So if you stay in patrol for 15 years, you're maxed out at eight years. There will be raises over the course, but your step will be maxed out. There's also, we have two canines, a patrol dog that does a vast a variety of things from uh, tracking to evidence recovery um, to uh, patrol work. It does a lot. The lab is a narcotics dog and that's used to uh, hopefully find bad drugs and get on the street. Um, they get a stipend um, as well as our detectives would get a stipend uh, as well. So again, this is for 19 police officers. If I'm going too fast, just let me know. Just yell at me. Everybody good so far? Uh, dispatch. Mr. Duvain, you asked what dispatches uh, did last week, I think it was, or whatever. Uh, they are the backbone of the agency. Uh, they're the ones that answer the calls that come in, whether there are four non-emergency lines plus two emergency lines. They have to take all the data, that all the information they get, they have to enter it into a records management system. They have to take that and they have to dispatch the police officer to the call. At the same time, while the police officers respond to the call, they're asking for them to run the homeowner, um, make sure there's no weapons involved, search to see if anybody has firearms registered. They have to do reports. Uh, they act as clerks. Uh, so they do a ton. And obviously, they operate 24-7 as well. So as far as dispatchers, we have a full-time dispatcher on midnight shift, uh, normally Monday through Friday. Uh, when I say midnight shift, uh, our midnight shift runs from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, we have one full-time day shift dispatcher. Uh, that dispatcher runs from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then one full-time evening shift dispatcher, which is 3 p.m. Uh, to 11 p.m. We have six part-time dispatchers. What they do is they fill in on weekends, holidays, uh, vacations, sick days, PL days. Um, we do have six now, which is almost unheard of, uh, but uh, again, that, that's a good thing because it uh, alleviates a lot from the midnight or the full-timers to have to pull over to cover a shift. Any questions? Cool. Uh, police overtime. Uh, I hate to say it, um, I've been to the board, I, or at least submitted a couple times for uh, line item transfers. Uh, unfortunately, this one's going to be coming up very soon again. Uh, because currently my overtime budget is at a bare bones, uh, almost dry. And we still have uh, three months left into the fiscal year. This police overtime is what we call in-house overtime. In-house overtime cannot be confused with special duty or outside overtime. This is overtime to cover and maintain minimum staffing levels to make sure shifts are properly filled, whether an officer is injured, sick, uh, takes vacation, uh, a personal day, we have to make sure we have adequate staff to be able to do this 24-7. If we have an emergency, uh, we don't run a lot of police officers on. Usually we have two, sometimes three officers on. We do see a few here as we're doing uh, SWAT training and stuff uh, down the road. Um, and then they're here for support. But 
that's when we would call in overtime. Uh, so if we have people out, we have emergencies going on, whether we're doing a narcotics ward, or whether we have a robbery, or we have a sexual assault, it requires more personnel to come in, and that's uh, on overtime. I have an increase of 10,500 this year. Um, I believe this would be adequate as long as we can try to maintain our staffing level. If our staffing level drops, that top number of 120,500 uh, goes away very, very fast. Holidays pay is a contractual item. It is in their uh, the collective bargaining agreement. Basically what that does, it allows offers, officers to either take extra pay on the holiday they work, or they're allowed to bank a day as like a day off for the future. Um, there's 14 holidays right now, and they're allowed to take seven of them and bank them into a, a category so they can use them in the future. What's your name? Is that pay uh, computed on time and a half? Yes, if they're working that day. Okay. So, so yes. But you only give them one day off. Uh, they work a 4 2 5 2 schedule. It means four days on, two days off, five days on, two days off. And that's how they can do it throughout the year. So, however they line up in those, uh, they, could, they could work Christmas, but have, uh, I don't know, Thanksgiving off or vice versa. So, if they're working, they actually get paid double time and a half or choose to make a day. If they're not working, they get paid eight hours of holiday on top of their normal pay. I have an increase of $5,000 in this line item because obviously pay skills go up. I have to make sure that that item goes up. This is best guess judgment. Um, I can't predict who's going to bank days uh, versus who's not. Uniform allowance, this is a quarterly allowance. They're entitled to quarterly allowance to maintain and replace any damaged uh, uniforms. Also, a new hire gets $1,200 of uniform allowance to start their process of their law enforcement career. Uh, to be honest, it's not, at, not anywhere enough. Typically, a new officer that comes, they're spending about $4,000 to just hit the road. And a lot of that's coming out of their pocket. Uh, as of right now, as long as uh, things go smooth and we don't have uh, a lot of damage stuff on, on duty, uh, we should be consistent with leaving that number the same as this current fiscal year. Sick day incentive. So I get this question a lot um, from the Board of Finance because after like August or September, you will see that that line item is almost zero or has like a couple hundred dollars in it. Same thing instead of is a contractual item, and it, it paid out after somebody's been here for five years without calling in sick. So if they're here for five years and they don't call in sick, then they get paid for the sick time that they accumulate from that five years on. Uh, but it's paid out in July at the beginning of the fiscal year. It's a one-time payment in July at the beginning of the year. So you would see, come August, that next budget statement, you'll see the sick item, oh wow, it's just like, $150. Why is there money left? Well, because we're doing budgets now. I can't determine whether uh, Sergeant Bernier is going to call in sick in June. If he called in sick in June, I know now I'm going to have an extra eight hours in that item, that line item, because I didn't pay him out in July yet. So it, it's, I don't want to say best guess judgment. It's, it's really close, but it will never be exact if somebody calls in sick prior to the new fiscal year. Education incentive. This is paid out, again, same thing at the beginning of the year. And it's for people that have degrees from uh, associates, bachelors, to masters. Paid out one time. There's a decrease of $1,000 uh, due to departures. Supplies and expenses. I want to say it's almost like a, a catch-all that something doesn't fit into this category. We also use this for building repairs. Um, we need to paint a hallway or fix something, uh, we also take it out of supplies and expenses. But for most part, this is for office supplies, uh, crime scene supplies, uh, maintenance, prisoner meals. We do have to feed them three times a day. Uh, McDonald's is where we go. They get an English muffin, hash brown, and an OJ for breakfast, a hamburger, small fry, and a Coke for lunch, and a hamburger, a small fry, and a Coke. Um, and that's what we, we 
you pay out of for the supplies and expenses for customers. Uh, there's an increase of only $500, again, that's just an estimate from that aspect. Training and membership, you're going to see that this is one of uh, the bigger bumps as it comes to percentage-wise of an increase. Um, if you look, if you if you ever done research and you, you look at law enforcement, um, towns and cities get sued in two aspects. Uh, one of them is, is poor supervision, and the other one is lack of training. Uh, those are the two number one reasons uh, to for a municipality to get sued um, is because of lack of training and, and lack of uh, or poor supervision. It's very important that uh, we continue to increase this this line item. You have to remember that the department has approximately 30 uh, uh, employees. They're not all police officers, but everybody needs some sort of training. Uh, dispatchers have their own training. Uh, police officers have their own training. If you were to break down this number, you would look at that maybe as approximately $2,000 a year per person to have training, uh, which is nearly not enough. I myself need training. Uh, everybody here needs to meet a certain criteria of training, a certain number of hours um, in order to be recertified. What, what's typical training? Uh, so I have to keep my certification. So I have to still meet certain thresholds, uh, such as a shooting, um, such as supervision, um, such as uh, hands-on um, when it comes to practical skills. And then there's another category towards the end. It's called executive training. And that is leadership trainings, um, but you don't find them around here. Um, I have to travel, uh, whether it be in uh, Vegas, whether it be in Florida, whether it be in Chicago. Um, I get a lot of that through the International Associations of Chiefs of Police. The Connecticut Chiefs of Police Association is where I get most of my training from. Good question. Any questions on training memberships? Uh, computers and technology, there's an increase of $10,000 uh, from this current fiscal year. There are things in this computer technology that I don't understand. It's out of my pay grade. Uh, I'm told to put it in here because we need it for some sort of protection. Um, so I won't bore you in a lot of it. Um, I did break it down as much as possible. Um, and if there's any questions as it pertains to computers and technology, um, ask. I'll do my best to try to trying to figure out uh, what that is. Um, I think office is kind of clear as can be. Uh, protocol Networks is an outsource um, help with basically our technology. Um, they're their IT people. Uh, we use them for, I think, the last, hmm, I want to say give or take eight years or so. We start getting to Veeam, VMware. These are like servers. Um, what's that? Who's advising you on that? Uh, you protocol that? networks. Good question. Protocol networks and Kyle Commons. Okay. Uh, Sophis, uh, that's our virus protection. And when we start getting to like the XDR and MT30, I don't have the slightest idea what half that stuff means. I just know we need it for protection uh, based on what the professionals are telling me. Our voice logger. That actually records all our telephone calls. We're required to record all our incoming and outgoing telephone calls, as well as our radio communication. Uh, our big soul is the alert system. We split half with the town side here and the PD size, uh, side. Um, our dashboard cameras, we have a, a, a lease to own program. It's a five year program. I think actually this says two year, but that actually should say three years. We're in our this will be our third year of a five-year commitment for our dashboard and body board cameras, which, again, uh, is required by state law. Our records management system, that is our RMS, that it controls all aspects of what we do on a daily basis. When a cop reports to work, they get logged into the RMS system. When he goes to a call, they log it into the RMS system. When he gets out of his vehicle to go to Cumberland Farms to get a drink, they log it into the RMS system. It also tracks where every officer is at all times. Uh, so we have Celebrite, which is a digital forensic software. Um, it is used to extract uh, uh, information from phones, computers, uh, unfortunately stuff like child porn or sex assaults. Uh, that's, that's what that is used for. Uh, VCS scheduling, that's our scheduling software. Our Power DMS, there was a question uh, last year. 
Howard EMS, uh, Plainfield Police Department has hundreds of policies, hundreds of policies. This houses all our policies. Officers, uh, there's no possible way they're going to be able to remember all the policies, but they can access that via their in-car uh, computer as well as their, their phones, and they can pop it right up and pull up a policy to make sure that they're following that to a team. I don't have a lot in this line item, and this is computer and technology contingency. Basically what that's used for, if a monitor goes, keyboards go, or whatever it is, that is used to replace that app. Questions? Yeah. What kind of restrictions do you have if you have to make a stop or enter a, 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 a home? What holds you back? So there, there's a variety of things that can hold us back. Well, one of them can be a uh, lack of exigent circumstances, um, a lack of uh, anybody that's hurt inside. Um, we can't just go into somebody's home. There has to be a reason behind it. And it has to meet a certain threshold in order for us to make that entry. How do you document that reason? What do you, I'm sorry? How do you document that reason that you use to get into that home? Does it go back to the oh, Yep, they notify dispatch. Dispatch records it, but not only that, when that cop gets back, guess what he's doing? He's sitting down and he's writing a, a police report. And in conjunction, he's taking his body-worn camera footage, and that gets recorded into the system. And he has to actually uh, uh, mark that camera to make sure that it coincides with that report. When you make a stop, do you have to explain to that person or persons exactly why you're stopping? Yes. Them? Yep. So policy will tell us that if you get stopped, we are going to tell you why you were stopped. And does that person have to show you identification? Yes, they do. That's the law. Or yes, they do. You, if you're operating operating a motor vehicle, is is a privilege. And it is not something that is granted to you. So yes, you are required to show a form of ID if you were there. We have if we conducted a legal stop, you have a, you need to give us your license on the rest. Utilities. Um, I've been going through this a lot. I don't have any increase from current fiscal year. I think uh, based on looking at what we have our current fiscal year, we're actually in a good spot. Um, so I did not adjust that, as I think we're okay in that one right now. How many have control at one time? Like right now, how many guys are on the two? Two, sometimes three. At this day and age, there should always be at least two in a supervisor. But I can't because every time I come, I, I, I have something cut, and then I can't put that supervisor that needs to be on, so I'll run to. Vehicle expenses. Um, I broke it down basically just into two categories. Uh, fuel. Fuel is best guess. I don't know what the fuel cost is going to be. I know the first selectman tries, when he gets it, tries to fill up. I know he has another idea about putting another tank up there, which would probably help and save a lot if we can get the fuel cheap. Um, so that fluctuates, just like it does uh, when you go to the gas station and get fuel. Um, I guesstimated anywhere between 15 or 14 and 18,000 gallons of fuel a year. Take that number, I use about 16, and I base it on $3.25 a gallon. I don't even know what it is right now. I know we get it a little bit cheaper. I don't even know what gas is now. I believe it's like three forty, maybe. I don't know. You go to Moose Up, it's like fifteen cents cheaper than it's in Um And then I have other expenses, and that goes for parts, uh, maintenance, tires, emergency equipment, etc. If I have a cruiser, and because this is what manufacturers do now, when you buy a new cruiser, they're never the same anymore than the previous year, for the most part. So the stuff that you have in there, that's custom made for that. You have to buy new custom-made stuff for it because it's a new cruiser and it's a new year. As you can see what a manufacturer doing now, they change the design all the time. So when they do that, they change the design inside. And now my cage that is like three, four thousand dollars in the cage now does not fit in the new vehicle if I want to transfer them out. So to outfit a car, it's usually or a cruiser or a SUV, it's seven to ten thousand dollars to outfit a vehicle. Not counting the dashboard camera or the computer. I haven't seen anything about your mechanic. Does he not He's great. Here? He's great. He's the town's mechanic. His office is just in the BD. What's the The town. So he doesn't, his office is doesn't have just drive? No. <coughs> his office is at the PE. 
PD. So he still works on town vehicles, just adds a PD. But, but just PD uh, vehicles? No, PD and town vehicles. He just don't work on those big trucks. Those big red trucks you see driving about with those big plows, he don't work on those. And so who pays for him? The tab in the uh, highway department. In the highway department. Yep. What, uh, what happens to the uh, stuff that you take out of the food that you can't put into new one? So a lot of times it's no good. It's no good. Um, there's nothing that you can do with it. <coughs> good here. This one, now, mm -hmm. now, no Police vehicles are changing so fast. They're 100,000 miles on, on my car, a regular car, or your car today. That's good, right? It's great. 100,000 miles on a cruiser, on Earth, gross. You gotta remember, people are driving that differently, they're running nonstop, they're braking, they're, they're fast, they're slow. Uh, it's not like having 100,000 miles on your vehicle. Um, and that's why they're constantly getting changed, they're constantly trying to make them more efficient. Uh, it's not really working, because the gap that there is with police vehicles now has shortened, because there's only a few that you can get. You can get a Tahoe, you can get a Ford Explorer, or you can get a Durango. They're pushing away from the chargers, and that's basically all you have to choose for vehicles. <coughs> There's an increase uh, of $5,000 in this one. What's list. driving that change? What's that? What's driving that change away from the charger or some of these other Well, because of what's required inside the vehicles. If you go look at a, a charger and you have somebody like this guy sitting in the charger, he ain't getting out. But you have somebody like, uh, well, I don't want to go there, but if you have somebody a little bit small, the charger's fine, right? But now, where are we? We're also in New England. So we go everywhere, right? So we're in the woods, we're on back roads, dirt roads. We need that four wheel drive. And the charges are just not efficient. And uh, Dodge or Ram, whatever, knows that they're not. And that's why they're slowly pushing away. They want you to drag them, which is what? You actually be surprised the Tahoe's are actually one of the cheapest uh, compared to the Ford Explorers and the Dodge Durango's. For the police version. Uh, rubbish removal, uh, basically it's just a dumpster at the PD, we have one dumpster. Uh, we guesstimated an increase, just as with everybody, the garbage just go up. Uh, that's $2,000 a year. Heart and hypertension, uh, this was back in the early, uh, sorry, the early, uh, or in the 80s, in, in early 90s. Uh, the law requires us to pay for heart and hypertension benefits for a retired police officer. There's only one uh, retired police officer that we still have to have, and that's for like, prescriptions and stuff, uh, or any type of medical treatment as it pertains to heart and hypertension. Um, that can't go away. Um, that has to be there for that police officer uh, for now and so the foreseeable future. This kind of a job can be very, again, mentally challenging. You have ready access to a psychologist, so, did you say readily available? Yeah. You know, um, I make a phone call and he's there. Because one of my officers just witnessed. I, I would make that happen, but it's not as easy as you think. Uh, it's not as easy as you think. Uh, we have certain situations that go on where I need to get treatment for someone, and it's taken two, three days to actually line that up. Um, just because of, of hoops that you have to go through. It's, it's terrible. Um, we try to do our best. We have a peer support system uh, in place. Uh, we try to do the best with the resources um, in the budget that we have. So, so you don't have somebody, like, like right now, you can make a phone call to and expect them to be available within hours. That's probably not going to happen. How can we change that? Or do we need to? We have to uh, have a, a counselor or a psychiatrist uh, kind of like on like a retainer um, to be able to make that call and, and be able to get that person here. So like right now, I, I needed to use one and it took me two days to it. Now how long after the officer has left the department by retirement, for instance, mm -hmm. does that continue for them or her? Yep. You don't continue it? We, we get them, well, they still can have the EAP, uh, which is a employee assistance program, um, but no, there's, there's, there's no services. Trust me, if you want me to put the line item in the budget, I would do it. Um, the problem is, I, again, I get cut on certain aspects and nobody realized what, what these line items mean and when we start taking away from it. 
I'm only going to try to cut the bottom line. I'm going to leave that up to Bruce to take care of that. See? But, and the thing is, you look at the bottom line, and that's why I go through each and every item here to explain uh, where every penny is going through, or going to. Maintenance, this is a little bit different this year. Um, you'll see an increase of $20,967. Round it up a little bit. Um, basically, we have a part-timer now that works five hours a, a day, um, 25 hours a week. Uh, this increases him to full-time and allows him to do the complete rounds of the PD inside and outside as well as all the maintenance. That's not covered by the top? Yeah, PD town budget. They, they, they can barely do what they have here uh, for the town hall. Um, and I don't even know if, if the first leg is increasing his. They, they, when we originally had him, when... Ted, if you remember a few years ago, we had a part-time person that was splitting their time between the town hall right. and the police. Uh, Chief and I spoke about that. They would like to have someone who is there on site. So that's why we put that person in the budget to cover their entire uh, facility. You gotta remember, our building operates 24/7. Uh, they could only come up for an hour, maybe two, every few days, um, and we have people in and out all the time. It's disgusting. I'll show you photos of things um, of how our building is. If we can't increase him to have time, it's crazy. I'm not worried about his time. I'm worried about who has to pay. Well, I mean, if, if he's working completely out of the PD, I think it's sufficient that it comes out of the PD line on this. Okay. I assume you would agree with that. <laughs> uh, police pension. I can only uh, uh, go by what is given to me by, by the first elected in the finance department. Uh, last year, there was a substantial, uh, uh, I won't say substantial amount, it was a, a set amount. There is a reduction in this line item because of an actuary report um, that basically when, when that is done, it's the professionals telling you exactly what numbers the town should be putting into the pension account and what numbers uh, the police officers should be putting into the pension account. Police officers pay anywhere between 8 and 12 percent approximately of their gross pay into the police pension. This is the town's contribution uh, for the year. There's a decrease of $207,705 in this life. So our current contract negotiations, they still have pensions, they still have pensions? Yes, for police officers. If you didn't, I have a pension for a police officer, you wouldn't have a police officer. Anyway, yeah, this is getting away from the past time. Not long for me still. Yeah. Good question. Um, HVAC. I've been trying to put this in for several years now. Yes, they're still alive. Uh, there's two HVAC units that need to be replaced. They are in dire need of replacement. Um, this is a new line item again. I'm hoping that we can replace uh, two of our three HVAC system. One was replaced almost two years ago now. So this is an increase of $17,000. i am hoping we can still get it done for that, that amount. Uh, I increased it from last year by $2,000. If you look, these are the two HVAC units that need to be replaced. This is the filter inside uh, the lower house. Um, and these are the units that are in dire need of the product replacement. Do you anticipate me this a one time expense? <coughs> Correct. So once these are done, I, I won't need that again. I mean, hopefully they last. What stage of the period? Uh, 1988. And those are the originals? Uh, they're about 20 years old. Maybe 25. Uh, so, total proposed budget. What I was to saying to cut this line, uh, there's a total increase of 114361 That includes everything that you've seen here today. <clears throat> My next slide is, is something that I think is pretty important um, because of that increase of 114000 uh, My next slide is, listen, we are law enforcement. We're not in here to make, make money on behalf of the town, but we do have to charge certain things. Um, I'm estimating the revenue at 174748 50000 more than what my anticipated increase in my budget line item is going to be. How do we get revenue? Well, when you come and get fingerprinted, not a town citizen, we don't charge town citizens, um, town residents, uh, but other people that come, whether it be from Killingly, Brooklyn, or whatever, we charge them uh, a certain amount of money for fingerprints. Uh, 
Uh, background checks, if you want to come to the AD, we will only do town or plain found background checks. We charge you money. Free of information requests, these are, again, reports. Um, discs. Um, pistol permits, when you come and get your pistol permit, we charge a certain amount of money for your background check. That's where we get that money from. Raffles, <coughs> you got to pay to get permits for raffles. Um, other permits, it could be bingo, vendor, um, are also other charges. The biggest one is what we call outside duty overtime or special duty overtime. It is overtime, not paid by the taxpayers or the town of Plainfield. It is paid by the contractor. We charge a contractor a set amount of money. The police officer makes a set amount of money. The town has to pay a, uh, a FICA tax per hour of the officer being out there, so that has to get subtracted. So, for instance, as an example, if I charge $130 an hour to the contractor, cop, let's say, gets paid $75, you got to minus that. The town has to pay a $6 FICA fee, minus that. The rest of the money is income coming in. So, on average, I am estimating that there's going to be 3,525 hours of extra duty or special duty overtime. That means there's going to be a collection total of approximately companies were coming in and they were all over the place. Oh, yeah, so was, that was a, a yeah, huge was increase. Yeah. 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 When you say 114,000 or whatever, less than last year, is that include no. all of this? More than last year, 114,000 more. Is I'm that just include all this of these revenues? Is that the net? No, no, that's not even looking at the revenue. If I was to use this against the revenue, I would be 50,000 ahead cash coming in.
because unfortunately somebody was involved in a motor vehicle crash and the vehicle was totaled. So that vehicle is going to be replaced uh, hopefully within the next uh, uh, month or so. Uh, our police pickup truck uh, is extremely old. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of miles on it, but the frame has been replaced multiple times. Um, it is rusted uh, and it's unsafe and it's time to be replaced. Uh, I know a hot topic is that uh, Everett Storage Building. I don't know if anybody saw it. They drove by the PD. There's an Everett Storage Building. Um, what this is right here is actually for the electric and HVAC uh, for that building. Uh, the HVAC replacement for the PD is also on there again in the five-year capital. Chief, if you would mind just to yes, sir. clarify something. You saw in the packet earlier that you had $17,000 as the last line item for HVAC. Um, I would be requesting that that one right there be taken out uh, because you've already got it in your budget. Yes. So we could possibly do that. Um, there's there's a lot of factors that go in with this, and I, I, I apologize, but the five-year capital is also something we have to watch out because we don't want to continue taking from the fund balance. So we're trying to be very careful. You notice that uh, while the chief has a fund balance, uh, five -year, uh, things out of the five-year capital, um, you have in your packet something there for the proposed five-year capital. And the things for the, the requested by the chief this year, um, obviously, are the, uh, the truck, uh, the evidence, and um, I've got it as the uh, taking out that 17,000 for the five-year capital because we have it in the budget. Uh, five-year capital. I go back to the uh, two uh, police vehicles. Uh, this is a training simulator for for us to use. Uh, it makes uh, our training like real life and we can do it in-house instead of outsourcing. Um, a vehicle lift, our mechanic doesn't have a lift, he needs a lift. This would put a lift in the Evans storage building slash garage. Um, no, his office is not going to be in there, but if he needed to use it um, to inspect a fatality, whether it be that car or another vehicle where he needs to use a lift, yes, he would use that. Um, also, an all-terrain vehicle, uh, we're trying to get a grant for it. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that cost. Again, uh, just going back over our five-year capital, we have uh, two police vehicles, a locker room. If you haven't done it in a while or you haven't done it at all, I strongly suggest just get a tour of the PD. I'll even get you for a ride along if you want that. But you can see that our locker rooms are in are, are need of help. <coughs> um, records retention filing, we have records everywhere because we utilize every single space of the building. The town uh, clerk did a phenomenal job with her record system, and we want to make that somewhat similar, but it's going to be smaller because of the size of the spots we have. Um, we had that come out, and that's what they estimated would cost for them to fix our, our records filing and retention. Uh, again, this is uh, two police vehicles. You're going to see it says evidence room overhaul. We still have an evidence room inside the PD. That evidence room inside the PD um, still has to be there. It still will be used. Not all the evidence is going out to the evidence storage building. Only certain aspects, stuff that shouldn't be inside that building, or large items like vehicles. Um, that evidence room is packed. It has no ventilation system. It has a lot of drugs. It has a lot of weapons. And there's and blood and sexual assault kits. And there's no ventilation. We have to do something as it relates to that. Uh, last but not least in the five-year capital, two police vehicles. Uh, we seal coded the parking lot uh, maybe two years ago, a year ago. Uh, this is just says to reseal it. We redid the parking lot about eight years ago, so we just want to keep it and make sure it's good. I don't know why I have that but The other one is actually a uh, laser scanner to for Christ and not seal coded it. Chief? Again, this is five-year capital. <coughs> You've got the two lines there. Yeah, that say, yeah, that's actually uh, a ferro uh, scanner. Yes, and I don't know why that, that did that, but I, I had somebody check this twice. I'm gonna have to talk to that person that reviewed this. Um, that ferro scanner actually scans crime scenes, um, fatal accidents, and recreates them. Honestly, if you ever saw anything like CSI, I hate utilizing that, um, but it's it's like a software, so you can actually map the entire scene. Apologize, it's not sealed code for anything. Questions or comments as it pertains to the budget? I've got one, and I yes, think sir. I can help out. Because a question, a great question came up earlier. You were talking about the vehicles. In your packet that you have from the police, if you take a look at page 18, 
you'll see the total list of all the vehicles and their mileage. And that'll help out to understand what the age is and uh, usage. So again, they're all in steps. It is still in uh, the early portions of the contract negotiations. Not yours, the other officers. No, that's correct. Oh, so they are here? Yes. yes. Yep. And then you've got the lieutenant down for a 15% increase? Correct. So th there's different steps. And so basically what we're trying to do, and uh, uh, the first <coughs> one, too, is we're trying to make our positions comparable to I want to say comparable to the agencies near us, but they're still way above us. Um, we're trying to get to that level of where they're going to be comparative. All right, uh, we can do a lot to say that we're going to recruit, but what are we going to do to retain? So we have to retain. So these steps are going to fluctuate anywhere from seven to fifteen percent on that first initial step. Okay. Can you explain again about the hundred fine? Sure. What happens to uh, an officer that gets hit and then leaves? as far as uh, payments or whatever? It depends on whether they leave. It depends on whether they're certified or not. Um, in their union contract, there is a portion of if you leave within the first year, you have to pay back uh, up to 50% of the costs associated with it, up to 25000 Who monitors that? What's that? Who monitors that? What do you mean as we monitor this? So it's my job to prepare it, submit it to the town hall, and submit it to that person for collection. So I get the numbers together, send it to the town hall to verify numbers, and we send it to them to, to pay. Now there's also state statute that plays a factor. If they're not certified, we can only go by what our contract says. If they're certified, they have to stay here within a certain amount of time, or that municipality will have to pay if they go somewhere else. But if they don't go into policing, then it wouldn't matter. Does the state have all of all of Absolutely not. Have you approached anybody on the state level? Yeah, they're, they're not going out. They, they decided to make the, the law uh, about certification that somebody even left here was able to circumvent. How much of a jump are we seeing in the sergeant's line on the If you don't have it broken down in the regular front over here? Um, it depends. Again, the you sergeants gave, have steps. Yeah, you gave us two, four sergeants total, two at 94 and two at 92. Yep. What's the current year of wages? Uh, well, I'm sure the one of the sergeants was definitely at a different step. I don't know off the top of my head what their what okay. current wage is at. And then shift differential for that shift. Is there one? Uh, it would be wonderful, um, but no. Not for dispatchers or officers? No. How much does it cost us, the town, to send somebody up there to maintain the grounds? Currently, you send somebody up there to mow, right? Or is he still, is he doing it now? No, he's not doing it now. He's, he's not doing it now. So if somebody from the town side is going up to mow? Um, um, yes, but what, how can I figure out cost of that? Be, what part? What, I mean, how much time do you spend up there? An hour or two? It depends on the season, too. I mean, they go up there and they shovel during the winter time. Okay. Um, they and would and go up and do landscaping. And at times they don't even get there because they're doing other fields and so, stuff. So the increase in wages basically will see that on your side, like down a little bit, or offset a little bit. He, he, does, he doesn't even have enough time to complete the task inside. No, 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 I'm not questioning that. I'm wondering, we're taking, somebody's currently doing that job on, on the town side. But you're only talking about mowing and weed whacking. I mean, that's it. I mean, it is in and out. Like, the, we need to take care of the ground so we can maintain our grounds. But right. yeah, it just it, it's it's more to what he's going to be doing is going to be more than okay. Now he's at a task. I got twenty five thousand dollars added just for him to mow and weed whack. Is that's not no, no, no. the case. There's all the things I'm sure he's doing that he would have to do too. But I was just curious as to how much we're going to save on that end by putting somebody up there full time to do it all the time. Right. I understand that too. But you also got to look at our building is a little bit different because we're operating twenty four seven. Um, you look at the, the rec department that is not, and they have a full-time custodian. Right. Um, and they've had it 
for, for years. I'm just trying to get up to that level so we can take care of and maintain the building. Granted, listen, I would love a brand new PD tomorrow, but I know that's not going to be the case, and it's a long process, and it's something that we're going to have to start planning out, whether that's 10 years from now or, or 5 years from now, um, because we've maxed out every portion of our building. Um, I don't know where else we, we could fit anything else. Um, you can see that our floors, we need replacement on our floors. These are the things that he's going to be able to do, and hopefully we can maintain our building long enough until uh, it comes time to our replacement. Do you think you'll be able to replace floors and stuff too? Oh, this one? Yes, he's great. Okay. You bet. Well, first of all, you answered quite a few of my questions before, before I had a chance to uncover them. But I do have several that I would like to ask. Um, right now, you're in negotiations for your salary and the deputies. Okay. When do you expect that to be resolved? I don't know. we got to meet with the first selectman and. Um, uh, go through those dates. Okay. So that right there is a potential future tool for the Absolutely. Okay. Um, on your uh, page five, we're talking about the police salary, so the salary. You mentioned that the police officers three uh, down at the bottom. I'm assuming those those three are not first step. All the way at the bottom? Yes. Yes and no. So when I when I do salaries I break it down, I mean, literally um, almost almost to the day, okay. give or take a few days. And what happens is, there again, like I said, there are different steps. Mm -hmm. There are starting, and then there's a one-year certified. There's a big jump between starting in, in the academy to being one-year certified. Well, what happens when somebody starts in November? I have to figure out his pay rate mm -hmm. from July 1st to November 1st. And because he's certified after a year later, now i got to figure out his certification pay rate from November 1st to June 30th, almost down to the debt. And that's how you list uh, their thing. So let's say you were to see the, the union contract, uh, the collective bargaining agreement for the police officers, and you went to their wage scale. You won't find anybody on a wage scale at $69,000. Why is that? Because it's broken down into between their steps. They had a step mixed in there that I had to adjust and account for. Um, sounds confusing, can be confusing, try breaking this down and figure that, you know, how are you going to do multiple pay rates um, and then come up with that number at the end of $1,598,000. Um, on training and membership, um, you just did the line on the transfer for training. Okay. When does the actual, is there a, uh, Time within the calendar year a set time, or is it a revolving thing as far as the police academy? Police academy, they have uh, the post uh, state academy mm -hmm. is in Marion. They also have satellite academies. Um, currently, we are going to be sending two recruits. Um, we couldn't even get them into the Marion Academy. We are sending them to the New Britain Satellite Academy. Um, because that's the only thing that's that's open at the time, which will be April 26th. Um, so there are set times, but not like one specific date. Uh, under the, uh, I guess it's miscellaneous expenses or whatever, DCS uh, schedule payroll software. Uh, could you explain how that is exported into the town's payroll? Uh, so, I can't speak how exactly it's exported. I don't do it. Okay. Um, so, I just review it, and it has all the data that's there. In an ideal world, it would be nice to press the button and for it to go to the town, and the town presses the button and all of those. But because police scheduling is so <coughs> convoluted and difficult, um, there are times where we have to go in, we change the hour, fix the hour, send it back, and have communication that goes on for almost a day and a half straight, trying to figure out payroll. Uh, under pension, um, you had an actuary made to make the suggested changes. How often is that going to take place? Is that going to be an annual thing? Uh, under your five-year capital, um, you're talking about on the two police vehicles, $110,000 for two. 
Is that base cost or does that include the installation and any of the special equipment? Not, not installation. It does include some of the equipment inside the vehicle. It does not include the, the camera, the dashboard camera, or the computer. It does re include uh, some lights um, and sirens or a siren um, and some other equipment. You got to remember there's cages in there, there's uh, um, safes, there's gun holders, uh, there's a variety of things other than just lights. Um, were you expecting any trouble tonight? Because I noticed that you were in the piece. Yeah, no, I usually always do. <laughs> uh, I, I think I got that guy's vehicle that you died for a grant. When do you expect to hear any type of update on it? For the ATV? Yeah. So initially we applied, uh, but the previous uh, uh, grant writer had left. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to touch base with the new grant writer so we can try to pick, off, pick up where we left off uh, to be able to do that. I mean, that would be ideal in the best case scenario. Um, I just but the bottom line is if we need one, we're going to confiscate one from somebody. Uh, whether it be one of our cops, we're going to take their personal one. So if we need one, we're going to take one. Uh, under the evidence storage building, what type of security is, is involved in that? So I don't, I don't have anything right now. What's that? I don't have anything right now. What are the plans for that? That's a great thing about cameras. Uh, remember, we're on the grounds 24-7. So okay. as long as we have monitoring 24-7, I'm happy. Obviously, it has uh, special locks and stuff as well. Um, I want to kind of follow up with a question that Ted asked earlier. Um, in looking at statistical data, you had 43 deaths that your police were had were called to. Uh, do, were any of them of the nature that caused uh, police to have some sort of uh, Impact, emotional impact. I think um, that's a good question. Um, we do a difficult job. Yeah. Um, it's an underpaid, underappreciated job. I think you look at it today. Um, we take a lot of heat for regardless of what happens. Um, I think we go through a lot of training um, to try to deal and cope with these situations. Um, but yet, still at the same time, everybody else can tell us how to do our jobs. Um, we train every day. Uh, to say that we forget about it, um, it does have an impact. Uh, I still remember things that I've dealt with uh, 20 plus years ago. Um, everybody has a different coping, coping mechanism. Um, we try to do our best and, and preach officer wellness, um, but you can only do so much for what you are given. Um, and that's where that situation lies. I can get a speech up here for the next hour and a half and talk about officer wellness on how we don't do enough. We don't do enough. We don't do enough. Um, because at the end of the day, nobody here is doing or seeing what we're doing on a daily basis. Have any of your officers have had to deliver a baby? Yes. <laughs> I guess they didn't even have one. They did not even have um, Are there any other questions from the board? The hours of work of the, of the uh, patrol uh, group, are they staying? Every three months, they can bid a different shift. They can bid the day shift, evening shift, or midnight shift. If you are a low man on a totem pole, you get whatever's left over. Meaning, if you're new, you get whatever's left over. I wish. I wish. No, nope, because they're going to be like, no more servicing these. 
We were only going to service these new ones. So then we start the whole cycle all over again. Instead of 38,000, I'm sure in three years it's going to be 68,000. Okay. Well, what agree to how many do we have and what are plans on those? So we do have one. Um, we don't have it actively using. It's a pricey subscription at about $17,000 a year to maintain. Uh, so we are not using that right now. State of Connecticut is trying to push forward a bill that will push more license plate readers to municipalities and actually pay for the service. I don't know if that's going to go through. That's currently a new bill that's up there. Should we mention that right now we are um, allowed, the department is allowed to charge a ten dollars fee to request the records for a disc? What's that? For a disc. For a disc. Fifty cents per page. But there is also a bill on, on the floor. Do you expect any type of resolution on that? I do. I do. Um, they tried passing it last year, and there was a little bit of uh, confliction going um, because there's still like victims that may need it in order for whatever, for victim services, mm -hmm. where you wouldn't charge that. But uh, somebody else down the road wants a copy because I have a problem with a neighbor, now you would charge for a certain amount of time. Even if it took you eight hours, you'd only charge, I don't know, let's just say three hours. <coughs> and maybe they would set a cap at 25 bucks an hour. Again, still not going to be enough to recoup everything, uh, but at least it's, it's more uh, than what we're getting now. Any other questions? Did you have trouble <clears throat> talking with the Bitsky or uh, Brad? Uh, stay right. No, no, I know it. No issues. No issues. They haven't reached out in a while. Who have we got here? The Bitsky? Um, we have Dr. Dr. Bitsky and, and Dolphin A. And Dolphin A and Heather Summers. And Heather Summers. And they usually Dr. reach out. They haven't reached out in a while. She's the north, north of Plainfield. Yes, yeah, so it, right over a city, it's Dr. Bitsky. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, it is. Cemetery yeah. Road South. Yes, so in, in this case, if he needs a state rep, he comes to Duff. Well, it covers all the playing fields, so you want to be able to reach out to both. Yeah, we can reach out to all of them, no matter. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, if an officer or two can say something on behalf of yes. you, you're that? Uh, yeah. Unless you have any other questions for me. Yeah. Questions for the chief at this moment. Uh, if not, then I will welcome any officer that would, or commissioner that would like to address the board. If you could just state your name and how long you've been with the force. Good evening. Uh, I'm Brian Burrow. Been employed by the uh, Plainfield Police Department uh, going on seven years. I'm currently the evening shift supervisor on, uh, on patrol. Uh, so, like I said, my name is Ryan Burrow. Uh, also a resident taxpayer, father of alumni of uh, Plainfield High School. Uh, I'm here tonight in support of the proposed Plainfield Police Department budget. Uh, one thing that I will add uh, is that there are several parts of this budget that could be improved. Some light items are just not good enough, and as we touched on today, uh, the training. The training could be much higher. Uh, why do we never get enough training? Did you talk about some of the lawsuits that come out are due to late supplies and trading. So, uh, I know that we may have an infinite number on there, but it, it can always improve. Um, other than that, some of the things in the uniforms and, and uh, things that were in there, all right? Currently, yes, new officers that get hired here are given that $1,200 stipend. Um, $1,200 isn't even close to being enough. Um, the new officers have to buy their, their own bulletproof vest. Uh, that alone is almost a thousand dollars alone, leaving them just a couple hundred dollars after taxes um, to purchase the rest of the things that they need. So, first of all, any any young college student coming out, or it doesn't matter their age, we should be giving them a vest right away. Um, we have to wear it every day. It should, it should be coming out of that. Um, you know, seeing a, a police cruiser removed from the uh, five-year capital. We need these cruisers. Some of them are getting high up in mileage in there. It's a shame that it had to be cut so soon. Um, I've spoken before um, regarding regarding our budget. Um, last year I did it at a, a town meeting. Now I'm trying to move up a little bit. 
sooner and sooner here, once again, just to, to put on here that there's nothing lavish or you know anything luxurious about our about our budget. It's, it's every cent is accounted for. Um, we're, we're not asking for uh, anything out of order. We're asking things that other departments around here are asking for and they're getting. Um, so I just wanted to make that known as well. Um, and while I understand that you all have a job to do, uh, you know, kind of what's going on right now with, with our officers is it, not good enough. To be fair, there are some proposed increases, such as the salaries, uh, which are well deserved. While these raises are a step in the right direction, there are other issues that need uh, attention as well. Um, you know, there's been a couple things that I believe Mr. Dumay that you brought up regarding you know, questioning if we have a 24-7 counselor. No, we don't. If, if we have an issue, we do have an employee assistance program. Uh, like the chief stated, we do have uh, a peer support program that I'm actually in charge of. So if there's something going on where we're having a bad day or something different, um, I try to help them out or I can point them in the right direction on how to get more help. Um, so that's one thing that we're trying to do. But once again, things cost money. We're only given, only given so much. So. Um, Mr. Peterson, I know you brought up your question the shift differential. That's not a line out of that. We haven't had a shift differential. Um, whether you work a day shift, evening shift, a midnight shift, uh, we all get uh, nothing extra on top of our pay. So those that work the, the night shift, um, you know, whether it's true or not, whether that's going to take years off your life by being on that shift, um, you know, I definitely think that it's felt. Um, then you had a couple order ins onto that. And do a lot, and it's not like being paid in the extra. But it was always like an expense. Is it guys? Kind of, that's why I'm surprised you didn't have it. We do not have it, and as long as I've been here, we have we have not had that. Um, so, for the purposes of not keeping me here till the sun rises, um, I'll keep this relatively brief and focus on one topic, and that is recruitment and retention. And in the past couple meetings, we've, we've talked about you know why are people leaving, and trying to get people in there, are we recouping money? All these questions about recruitment and retention. Okay. Um, I know that you are not the board of human resources, all right, but I, I need somewhere to start. This is this is my push. Uh, our union is anxiously awaiting the commencement of contract negotiations, which I believe will be the most uh, important contract um, in the history of the department. Uh, and let me explain why. As recently reported by the chief of police, uh, we do have several applicants who have sought employment by the town of Plainfield. Uh, some of them. Stood before uh, the Board of Police Commission uh, members last evening. Um, yes, we have applicants, but why? Um, I know for a fact that there are officers who chose Plainfield simply because they wanted to choose the first agency that extended an offer of employment. Um, I know several other officers who came to the Plainfield Police Department because they either were raised here, went to school here, or their family roots were planted here. As we look at our current rank and file, the number of officers who have some type of tie to this town has to decrease. We often talk about recruitment and retention, which is not only an issue in law enforcement, but a national issue in the last several years. In my opinion, when it comes to the Plainfield Police Department, yes, recruitment is important. But in my opinion, what is more important is retention. This has been an issue in other town uh, Plainfield departments as well, losing valuable employees to other employers. It appears that only then does the town try to create change or offer better benefits and pay? But by that time, it could be too late. They're already gone. Why would we not want to have prospective employees breaking down the door here at the town hall for the opportunity to work here? Instead, we are losing good officers, while those who stick around continue to do their jobs without hesitation and put their best foot forward every day. Why do we continue to lose highly, uh, good, highly trained <coughs> officers? They seek better employment opportunities to offer security benefit packages in the town of Plainfield. Better pay, better health care benefits, better retirement, room for growth and development. One of the things that I've been you know, working on and thinking about and research on is better retirement. There were things that were mentioned about the pension. What is a pension? Basically, money that we put in, that we put aside to have, to have good retirement. So when we hang up our uniforms at the end of 20 or 25 years, we're able to relax and have that you know, sense of security, financial stability uh, for all the hard work and sacrifice that our officers put into this town. Other departments do the same thing. It, it, 
it's an incentive to want to do this job. So when, you, when you're all said and done, um, you know, you just have that, that, that security for you and your family. Uh, there's a bill, Bill 334, um, I believe it's by the Public Safety Committee, uh, put forward. It's an act that would require uh, fire departments and those with this bill. Uh, but to move on here, when there's competitiveness, there's a real shot for retention. In my opinion, especially in the Plainfield Police Department, the retention rate lately has been poor. Retaining the police officers that we have invested in and spent tens of thousands of dollars to make them certified officers, not including any specialized training. Why have we lost applicants to other agencies? In the last couple of years, we have lost several veteran officers to other agencies. Two to Putnam, one to Ledger, one to Waterford, and the Ledger to Waterford was in approximately the last nine months. Could it be that the typical patrol shift generally consists of two officers, if we're lucky, sometimes a third? Two officers covering 43 square miles. This is nothing new, but with the continuous uptick in domestic violence and mental health calls, two officers is not enough. Just because it has been this way does not mean that it is right or safe. It is not a secret that historically it has appeared that the Plainfield Police Department at times has been a stepping stone in law enforcement. Many moving on to explore opportunities with the local and state agencies. With investing in the wellness, happiness, and future needs of our current officers, recruitment will come. Word of mouth is cheap advertising, but can be very valuable. Our department is very young and very, very eager to learn and make a positive impact in our community. With this being said, our officers are the hot commodity. We can realistically go to any department that we want to go to. There are over 55 agencies in the state of Connecticut right now looking for certified officers, eight of which are local. Like I said, this department is so young that our officers are not afraid to start over elsewhere. <coughs> Whether it's an officer that has been on for a couple of years or it's an officer that's been on for 16 years, our department history has proven that officers will make that move. It's not a bluff. It has happened and will continue to happen if we don't start taking care of our own. If we don't start appreciating our own, rest assured that another agency will. Overall, I do believe that a large majority of our residents do support the men and women of the Plainfield Police Department. In closing, I'm not fighting for just myself and what I believe in. I'm standing up for the men and women who I work beside to ensure that we all come out on top. How much more is it going to take? A serious injury, one of us getting shot and killed. That may sound a bit harsh to some of you, but this is our reality. And until you've worn a bulletproof vest every day to work, you probably won't understand. I want to speak about any of these issues further with anyone who wishes to sit down with me. Um, we're, we're doing the best that we can. They're, they're trying to put forward the best budget that they can. Once again, this is not anything lavish, this is us getting by. Um, we're just trying to stay afloat. We want to be competitive. We want to match other agencies. Um, realistically, we should be striving to, to surpass them. Um, I'm going to stand up for everyone in this department that puts on the badge and best every single day. Um, and I'm asking for everyone's support moving forward um, and continuous support because we, uh, we need more than ever. So I appreciate your time. Thank you, Brian. Can I ask a question? Brian, do you have a question? What are the best costs? For the best costs, I'd say they're anywhere probably between $800 and $1,000 uh, of strain by your reason. No, I bought mine three and a half years ago. It was like $900. $900. About $1,000 a piece. What's the shelf life? What's the shelf life? Oh, what's shelf life five expect? years, I believe. Five years now expire? To my knowledge. Right. Sorry. Okay. Did you buy a bunch of vests not too long ago? or Grants. So, uh, we got some from Grants. Some came from grant money, so we're going to reapply for more grants. Okay. Do we, after the five years when they're expiring, they bought the first one, do we replace them? Yes. Okay. Usually through the grant. Hmm? Okay. With a grant? Usually through the grant. Okay. But we do, because the uh, Department of Justice does put out a grant, but it's, it's 50%. And you have to make sure that you have a policy in place that ensures that they so we're basically making them buy their first vest and then we replace them as they need to be replaced? Depending on the money, yes. And then that vest leaves with them if they decide to move on. That's their vest. Uh, not necessarily that we would take that back. Or mm -hmm. make a, a deal with another agency from that aspect. It's still good. If it's no good, we use it to for training and shooting. 
even though they bought their first vest. If they bought it, then yes. They came with a vest. Yeah. We replaced it because it expired out. Correct. And that should be their vest to leave with. Uh, no. No? No. We not, if, not if the town paid for that vest. But they, we don't want to leave, so we should not get to that, that spot. We shouldn't get to that spot, but we are. Themselves, they did. What I'm saying is they bought the initial one. Yep. It expired and replaced it for them. Correct. That becomes their vest, right? Mm -hmm. Town property. It's still town property. We get to keep the first one that expired. You get Even though the town property. replaced it, because I bought my first one and they replaced it with the grant funded one, I get to keep that initial vest. So I have four of them hanging in my closet Which are used for that well. purpose. They might be used to it, I was for sure. <laughs> All right. This might be a stupid question, but why did they expire? Uh, the manufacturer only guaranteed that it's going to work for so long because of the fibers. They're afraid that they're deteriorating. So this, if they do get used, uh, they, they're no way out there. It's the Kevlar that's inside it uh, has like an expiration date like your aspirin. Yeah. So it's like kind of deteriorates and doesn't right. actually work anymore. Just like a child safety seat. Things have expiration. I think those are like seven years. Okay. Is there anyone else who'd like to from the department or the commissioner who would like to address that? Colleen Lebowski, Police Commission. Um, as you can see, this is a very thorough budget presentation, and I want to tell you that all the work behind it is equally as thorough. I think I can speak for the Commission, at least the ones who are here. Um, we fully support this budget. Do we think there are things that are not in it that should be, that we would like to see? Absolutely. We all want more. Especially for all these fine officers that put their life on the line every day for all of us. Um, they deserve to have better mental health support. They, they absolutely deserve a better pension. Um, so I just want to say, as the commission, we support this budget 100% and we hope that you will as well. Ken Sheldon from the Police Commission. I'm going to echo some of the sentiments that some of the other people said. Uh, Colleen from the Police Commission. I echo her sentiments that we wholeheartedly accept this police budget, but we feel that there is more that could be done. To what uh, Sergeant Morrill said with retention of officers, we spend a lot of time, a lot of training, and a lot of money on these new officers to come in here. We want to keep them. We have a fantastic police department right now, which is young, well-educated and well-trained. We need to keep them. And to be able to keep them, we need to make sure that they're paid correctly and their pensions are done correctly. They need these things to be able to keep them. They are losing officers. There is potential for us to lose officers again. These things have to be done. So there isn't enough in that, in that budget. As far as I'm concerned, and there should be more. I'm a taxpayer, just like everybody else. I've been in this town approximately 50 years. Back before I got in the police commission, I also thought the PD was maybe was spending a little too much money on the PD. Then I got in the police commission and I actually went to the PD and I sat there and watched dispatch. It took three, four right along the maybe. I spent a lot of time in the PD. The place is falling apart. They don't have enough room to keep stuff. The building was built by Ellis Tech, I think two years after I graduated from Ellis Tech. It's an old building. It's gonna be it's gonna need to be replaced. They need more space, they need more things, and more things uh, to get their job done correctly. So, I, I just want to reiterate again by the budget, the, the Police Commission has uh, backed it, but, like Colleen said, it, it's not enough. So I just wanted to say that.
and I. I oppose. Abstain. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen, and Colleen.